Imagine if you could take any pain you were feeling and with the power of your mind, wipe it away. It's not voodoo. It's happening right here in the Twin Cities. And tonight, Randy Meyer shows us it's becoming part of everyday medicine. This is fascinating. It's all, it's all up here, too. It's, it sounds funny, but, Chris, it's widely accepted that people generally only use about 10% of their brain's power. Now the medical world is beginning to tap into the power of the human mind. As you're about to see, more doctors are using self-hypnosis, imagery, and relaxation when medicine has done all it can. By the way, we must warn you, some of the scenes are graphic. Pain is really very relative. I show people how they can actually control pain very quickly. Especially children. As soon as you can show them, they'll believe you. The power of the mind may be the medicine of tomorrow. These Twin Cities doctors are teaching their patients to tap the hidden resource within themselves to deal with pain. Okay, so if we just we just did this and you try to lift it, go ahead. That's pain. You got a lot. Mm -hmm. Good. Sports psychologist Ray Petrus is helping Randy Sawatsky, an amateur marathon runner from Minneapolis. On a scale of 1 to 100, the runner measures his leg pain at 80. Randy focuses his mind on getting rid of the pain. Dr. Petrus uses a technique he calls psycho-neuro-pain response, involving a combination of imagery and biofeedback. Okay, I want you to say these words with me in your mind. I give myself permission to be perfectly pain-free if that's what's best for me. Minutes later, Randy's pain is gone. Okay, so I'm going to do it now. Put my hand in leg now. I want you to push up. Down. How much pain did you have, if any? None. Nothing. Why does it work? Well, Dr. Petrus says the brain is like a computer which can send pain-relieving messages to the body. If we say, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt, and generally people do. I mean, there's a problem. They're putting in a computer, and when you push recall, what does it say, I hurt? And the subconscious mind says, oh, you hurt? I can take care of that. We met up with Randy three hours later and watched him put his leg to the test. While it wasn't a pain-free run, Randy admits he's doing better. Yeah, maybe he changed my attitude, convinced me that it didn't hurt. I don't really know, but I, I don't hurt as bad as I did before. I like to visualize the sun. That really helps. Pediatricians are finding children have a natural talent for using biofeedback, self-hypnosis, and relaxation for pain control. A computer charts his progress as 16-year-old Joe Horvath concentrates on raising the temperature of his finger. Joe suffers from migraine headaches. He says this mental exercise makes them disappear. Even kids as young as five or six can actually learn how to do that very quickly and very effectively. Experts have known for years that these mind-bending techniques can control even the unbearable pain of surgery. Take a look at this. With the help of psychologist Dr. Don Hoagie, Greg Donellis used self-hypnosis and imagery to get through this hip reversal surgery. That's without even an aspirin. Feel the clear air. Take a deep breath of that clear air and be right at Carlton Peak, leaving your body here. If, you, if a person is feeling safe, uh, comfortable, sensations aren't that big a deal. Today, Dr. Hoagie teaches patients how to control their pain from trauma and to handle the anxiety and pain before and after an operation. You know, rather than just your doctor fixing you, getting involved using your own mind and body is something that people want to do. And, Chris, we should emphasize the techniques used by doctors and psychologists, they work with mm. medical doctors. So, well, I mean, this is... Uh, I think I, I, mean, I think I have the same reaction to anybody at home seeing this. How could you possibly do that without, without feeling it? It is hard to, to imagine, but they do it. That's fascinating. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. All right.